Welcome back. Now let's get into our conversation for the evening. Let's face it, when it comes to dating in Nairobi or any other big city in the world, it is expensive. So what if you are a young person trying to navigate through the dating market while broke or on a budget? Well, that's our discussion tonight. Uh, the author of an article titled, Every Broke Guy Deserves a Shot of Love is here. And uh, he'll be talking about why he wrote that particular article. But before we introduce the panelists and our mini audience let's take a look at just the average cost of a date in different parts of the world pulling up those numbers right now for you to look at and just to get a sense of just how expensive this affair is there we go uh, in Norway it's 170 dollars uh, and number five on that list is Tokyo Japan 122 dollars so there's your list in terms of the most expensive cities to date in that's Norway London New York City Stockholm, Sweden, and Tokyo. Let's take a look at the bottom five cities that's the cheapest to have a date in. This is quite interesting. Cape Town, South Africa, $55. Uh, Colombia is $52. Mexico City, $45. Mumbai, India, uh, $35. And Istanbul, Turkey, $31. So where does Kenya sit on this list of 26 countries? Well, we are number 16. And according to that list, uh, the average cost of a date in Kenya is roughly $74 or 7,000. 400 shillings, my goodness. Um, you know, for a lot of young men probably watching this segment thinking, how in the world am I supposed to even afford that? And you're doing that a couple times a month if you're trying to, uh, you know, swoon a woman. But let me introduce my guest really quickly. To my far left is Mariga Thoridi, who is a communications consultant and a columnist. And to my uh, right is Anita Ray, a Hot 96 radio presenter. And to my left, we have uh, a mini audience of university students who will be sharing just some of their experiences as they navigate this dating market. Uh, Mariga, let me begin with you. Mm -hmm. You decided to write this article. Every broke guy deserves a shot at love. Um, and there's always this expectation that men have to foot the bill when it comes to dating. And the pressure, I mean, is something that they also put on themselves before any suitor kind of shows up. But why did you decide to write that article? I said right because of past experiences, but things people are going through right now. People are stressed. It's a very interesting situation, particularly yeah. online. I wrote it because of the shame that comes with being a young man, growing, uh, building yourself financially, but not being at that point mm -hmm. and in the dating world. There's a lot of shame that comes with it. A lot of some of it internally, yeah. but a lot of it externally. The if you talk to a lot of men that you know, a lot of men who say I wouldn't date without having a job, if you ask them exactly why, they all have terrible experiences. No one talks about them, but they're terrible experiences, <laughs> humiliating <laughs> experiences, both online and in person, shaming you for just being where you are, shaming you for being in your early 20s and trying to figure life out. So I thought, might as well address it. Let's talk about it. Right. Yeah. And you know, um, Anita, this is such a concern. And as Mariga kind of said, it's embarrassing. A lot of these things that the men have to go through uh, just to find love. But why do you think it's persisted this long? And even in day and age of uh, gender equality and women feeling, no, I also want to cover the bill at times. I don't think any woman wants to cover a bill. No, I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. If a woman wants to cover a bill, it may take quite a thinking. But to be very honest, the reason why that has not changed is because we have um, a society that has changed just what they want to change, not yeah. everything. But our thinking still comes back to a man is a provider. Mm. A man is a person who's supposed to take care of the woman. No matter how empowered the woman is, the woman is always going to expect Believe it or not, a woman is going to, if you have a man, you'll always expect unknowingly. Yeah. He needs to pay rent. Who told, who told us that? I mean, we both live in the same house. Mm. Why can't the man buy the groceries I pay? But it doesn't work like that. Because you're looking at him as a provider of shelter, of he's going to supposed to take care of you, of the basic needs. And that always, as much as we want to evolve to anything else, we will always go back to that basic. That's how we were raised. Yeah. That's how we've grown up to be. So even when you meet a young man, you expect that. Without even knowingly you're putting pressure on him, you actually expect it. You're like, to key and a dinner, you expect him to pay. And maybe he's not working and you're working, but you actually <laughs> expect him to pay. Uh, if you enter a matatu, and maybe you have money, and maybe you even have lose. Like, I know he has a thousand, but I want to lose. Mm -mm. And you actually have it. I'm like, it's, it's just natural sometimes, and you don't notice it. But the problem is, nobody wants to change that. That's the biggest right, problem we have. Right. No woman wants to say, and the moment we change it, men say, you're becoming men.
Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, <laughs> how do you salvage this situation? It's almost like a no-win situation. Yeah. It's complex because there are two elements to it. As to why it has persisted for so long, it's a power game, right? Money is power yeah. in very many situations. Men have benefited in very many ways and for a very long time in terms of spending power, in terms of economic ability. And in turn, men have used this in very many ways to control women in their lives. Our fathers in many ways controlled our mothers. Mm. People don't admit it. Mm. Our mothers many times were there because of economic reasons. They couldn't work, they didn't have a good enough job, they needed to provide for their children. So when you bring this down, that the young men um, who've grown up knowing that one, the man is a provider, number two, this money means power, and power means money, yeah. then a lot of these things, I started to realize it's, it's an interesting circular problem because when the woman offers to pay in many of these situations, you take it as if what you'd do. So you take it as a power move mm -hmm. as opposed to somebody just offering to pay for right. a meal. Yes. So you're emasculated as a result of the woman saying, uh, you know, I've heard a guy say, the woman will do the um, fake reach of <laughs> knowing good and well, she is not going to pay for that. So he says, I've gone through that so many times knowing I'm going to be the one who picks up the bill. <laughs> you know. But let me come over to you guys because the, the, the struggle is real for you. Um, and you want to find someone to date and enjoy life with, at least campus life with. Um, what have some of your experiences been? You can introduce yourself and, and then probably talk about your experience. Okay. I'm called Lucas Omondi. Uh -huh. Is it on? It's on, yes. Go ahead. I'm called Go Lucas Omondi. Yeah. My experience with the relationship or dating in campus, I can begin by saying reality is a process. The unfolding meander of thoughts, as now we are discussing Mariga's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Dating while broke has sent majority of dating youths into traumatic challenges. What are some of those challenges? This, uh, these challenges include uh, things we see like uh, such as people committing suicide, mm. then uh, bootings and dumpings. Again, there is this new road being created leading uh, ladies to sponsors. Mm. And, and um, I'm glad you mentioned that because what dynamic has that introduced? Because you have your counterpart saying, I'm not even going to mess with any guys who are on my age because there's an older man who's making 10 times what I would imagine and he can take me around the world. Why am I having to struggle with someone who's at my level? How has that affected young people, you know, trying to find love, at least in your age group? Okay, uh, trying to find love in my age group the the backbone of love in today's world or the 21st century is money cash mm -hmm. that is the love is being laid on cash and when you are a man and you are in a relationship and you can't find you can't provide for your girlfriend then you will give her an expected opportunity to find herself with sponsors so let me hear from the the lady on uh, the panel what is going on on campus right now in terms of, of dating? Is it pretty much what he described? You know, we are living in a very competitive world. And we ladies, we need to look, to look good. And we look at the man as a financial security, you mm -hmm. see? Because you have to look good to fit in the competitive world. You have to have a nice phone, you see? Fitting in, there is this thing called fitting in. So you, you look at your man as your financial security. And when your man is not in a position to provide for you, you have to look for otherwise how to find an, 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 an exit or something, something of the sort. So, like, there is no way a lady, just a lady who is of good sense, will stick to a broke man. Would you date a broke guy? <laughs> Never. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's a point right there. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> let me hear from the guys back there. What lengths do guys go to uh, to make sure they impress this young lady? And you know your competition. Your competition is that guy driving a huge uh, Japanese vehicle, coming on campus with tinted windows and he's picking up a girl. How do you try to outdo that? Okay, I'm um, Adira James Christopher, and um, I think that the, the way our ladies are growing these days, like they make men think that the, the reason, the, before you date, having money is the prerequisite to dating, such that if you don't have money, stick around, do your work, 
look for money so that one day you'll also do it but it's also <laughs> <laughs> it's also making people think you know for you to have money you'll also be looking for young girls so I think there will be a continuation of sponsors they will always be there because the those who are competing with us for the campus ladies they are above us we can't compete with them most ladies according to the social media he will go to instagram he'll see someone in some island will some see some nice shoes some nice watches she will be looking for them but she will want them but you are in campus most of them are just surviving on health loans so how can you compete with them and you are also using the loan to pay your let's say school fees so if you you can find a girl who will accept you like that but most boys there most men there yeah. they still think that even if this girl is accepting me like this maybe she's just with me because of let's say companionship but finance she's getting from someone else and, and let me hear from you in terms of what is this doing to the self-esteem of a lot of young men on campus you know we keep talking about uh, the boy child crisis and you know the boy child feeling like they're being left behind with a dynamic like this in the dating market what does it do to you know your self-esteem okay i'm Martina Odera from the University of Nairobi. I think uh, in the world of today, the money is the everything. This is because, for example, if you are dating, if you, can, you can't date if you don't have money. And uh, as the Our Lady has said, he cannot date a poor man. Like if the man guy doesn't have money, right. he cannot date him because Let's say, for example, I don't have money and I want to date a lady. And you see the lady, the lady you find, maybe her expectations are much high and you can't afford to the lady. What will she do? She will leave you. She will go for that guy who can, who can provide and leave you behind. And that's why you find nowadays, mo most of us men, we lack, like you find a single. If you ask a man, are you dating? No, I'm not dating. Why? Because you don't have money. Mm -hmm. If you approach the lady, first of all, how you will look at you? She will be sizing you up based on how you're yeah. dressed. <laughs> first yeah. of all, you're not driving, so you know that. See the kind of shoes you're wearing. Right. The kind of clothes you're putting on. This guy is just broke. He cannot provide for me anything. In fact, that is living, giving us maybe limitless time. So let me come back uh, to my panel. I see a tweet here from uh, Derek Gatimbo saying, young boys are busy doing husband duties in temporary shanty <laughs> relationships. <laughs> you can't really grow. Um, and I really wonder, what does this mean? Uh, because it's kind of setting very dangerous and unrealistic expectations for relationships from the get-go. And, and you know, it will also kind of play its way into marriage as well. Um, Mariga, when you're thinking about it just now, on a larger societal scale, mm -hmm. what does this mean moving forward in terms of relationships if we're seeing these dynamics playing out now among young people? One of the, I wrote an article two years back which got a lot of heat and it was about the long-term impacts of exactly this situation. Mm -hmm. What happens is that the dynamics is that for many young men, you, if you're dating, dating becomes a budget item in your actual month. So long term, you actually, and dating isn't cheap. So long term is like, and very many expectations. I haven't gone through them, some of them, but I've seen it. People expect it to pay other people's rent and everything else put together. So long term is that you are growing, but you're spending half your money investing in someone mm. else's life. Right. Well, this person believes that their money is their money and invests their money. I find that absurd. I said people say no. Yeah. When I tell you people be a man, nothing, not being macho, don't accept some of these things. You have to question it, have discussions around it. Truth is that you won't always agree on it. And I've come to agree that we all have different expectations. One of the biggest things I think I've learned to do is to have honest discussions, especially about finances from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Are you compatible financially? Do you have the same financial expectations? If you are not financially compatible, walk away and walk away very quickly. Because I've talked to, 
in the span of me writing about men's issues for the past three or four years, I've talked to very many men in their 40s who are miserable because of financial incompatibility, especially with their wives. The lack of agreement on how to distribute um, school fees and rent and all these. People are miserable in their marriages because of finances. Hmm. Yeah. And is it because one partner doesn't want to kind of pull their weight and they're expecting one to probably do more, <coughs> one being the man? Yes, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. And so I find people in, I found situations and people I've talked to over time I've interviewed, men paying for houses they can't afford because their wives want to live in certain places. Wow. Men paying for school fees and kids, for their kids in schools they can't afford because of situations like these. And so they're expected to foot the primary bills and everything else on top of it beyond what they can do. And so you find people in very interesting circles going around, people miserable, people who I feel didn't have these conversations early enough, mm. or people who midway through still go on with these things dilly-dallying around the issues. Right. Yes. And uh, Anita, just truthfully speaking, if you're kind mm -hmm. of dating this guy, would you, uh, would you recommend that finances comes up as a topic during the dating? You know, because it's also something that's really <laughs> private. What do you think? I think I said this once and it made me not a good person to people, but I was honest when I said a lot of women say my money is my money and your money is our, our money. money right. Because that's, that's the truth. <laughs> women have a problem. Even You see how... She's uh, just, yeah. A, a, woman, a, a normal day woman. You, you know the, the problem with us women, we never want to hear the truth or even say it. No woman is going to want to go back to her past. They feel like when they go back to their past, they're raising a man. So you'll see them all over social media. Oh, Mr. Lea Monaume, I'm not going to help you pay bills. You're the man. And that's the problem of people don't want to discuss finances. And a man thinks having money or pretending to have money is what makes me a man. Mm. Right. We have brought down uh, being a man to monetary value, being a man to what shoe I'm wearing, being a man to what is that is it a designer suit. Mm. That's what we've brought down being a man to. So this man will fake it. They say fake it till you make it. This man is going to fake it and fake it into a marriage. Now when you say the marriage reality comes in, we're living together, <laughs> I can see you don't have the money. But the problem is you set the standards on the first day. Yeah. And men need to stop. Men need to stop saying, boy, child, I'm a kaliwa. No, magicalia. As a man, you set the standard. Mm. If the one you tell me to end up and I don't like it, then it's never that serious. It's not life or dead, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's no, we're not going to die if we're not together. And people need to understand that. But if the one I tell you, no... I don't know to banda, I gotta guess do you wear, then you're like, okay, una copa. You go you 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 go to these loans. Then no, you're paying a loan because you took me for dinner. Mm. Tell me the one. Man, nobody is sitting on your heads, nobody is pushing you to the wall. You push yourself. If you show a woman the one I don't have money for a cab yeah. and you know, my, my sister me I actually live in the ghetto somewhere there now you you want to hire your friend's place to take this woman for six months then when she wants to move in you can move in with her you know stop standing uh, setting and then we live in a world of social media it's yeah. a, you're yeah. getting jealous and imitating fake lives Someone is posing in a rented house. It's not their house. But you're there at asking a 25-year-old to give you a house. And no offense, maybe your parents are still renting. How? I mean, how does this work? We have to be realistic. And the worst thing is in campus, as, as, as he said. Mm. This man, you're losing self-esteem over girls. Why are you talking about love in campus? No offense. Why, what are you looking for? Is that for the reason you're in campus? Mulena Kusoma, oh, I'm looking for love in campus. What for? You people are misguided. Oh, you can't stay in campus without a girlfriend. How? Hey, the boy, what? you can't afford one. Women are not expensive. <laughs> you know, women are not expensive. They just demand things. You're in campus. You cannot meet a woman's demands at all. The only thing a woman will need there is companionship. That's when I say man, a sponsor, because you cannot be financial. So don't, don't put yourself being a man dependent on how women treat you. Mm. These young campus girls, all they want is to have nice nails, kamazake, you know, nice hair, you know, show off to her friends. That's it. Now you're there falling in love, looking for a wife, not in campus, not in campus. So you're recommending it should just be friendships while That's they're it. on campus, <laughs> campus and then is escalates to... Because on, honestly, to be honest, a campus guy, as you said, you have a health loan, right? You, you're using help money, okay? You're paying your school fees. Of course, you need to look good, not even for anyone else, for yourself, right? Mm. Do you need to look presentable. You're eating. Nairobi is not cheap, is it? You're eating, you're trying once in a while to go out with your friends. Now, there's another human being who's not your child, no offense. Now, she wants the same, same kind of demands. How are you going to fulfill them if you can't fulfill your own? You know, you raise a very interesting point uh, on the fact that women are just seeing it more like a transaction. Yeah. And as a tweet here, Job saying, fact, of late, uh, dating has become serious business for ladies outside here. They fundraise using that, while using others, they pay rent, clothe themselves, buy houses and cars. Men are suffering silently. <laughs> um, let, me, let me hear from you again, because 
would you agree that it's just relationships are just transactions at this stage that it's just what i can get out of you not me trying to get to know you and we're building something together it's just a give and take what do you make of it i think i'm not buying that idea that relationships <laughs> are a transaction mm -hmm. but then we need to say things the way they are and stop fantasizing about things that will never become a reality because we are living in a very competitive world and we ladies the fact is we need financial security the way Anitaria has just put it, that a lady's money is her money, but a gent's money is our money. So there is no way you'll expect me to be the provider. Because whenever I, I provide, it will be like I'm now the boss. And I never want that title of being the boss. So you'll have to provide because you're the man. And men are always the head. So you have to be the provider. Yeah, exactly. You know, what kind of, you poor guys. <laughs> What what kind of, of women are you looking for? If you're thinking how to get into a relationship, what qualities are you looking for? Because, I mean, if you're already being dismissed because you're not wearing the right shoes or you're not even driving a car, you don't have the right budget, um, what is there out for you? In term, what kind of choices do you have in terms of women right now at your stage? Because I don't think you want to go the friendship way, as Anita is saying. You definitely <laughs> want a relationship. <laughs> Okay, the kind of relationship I'm, I would like to be in is uh, I, I find a lady who can also provide. So you also wanted to chip in? Yeah, I want her also to help me provide for our kids maybe for the future. Uh -huh. Maybe. You're finding that absurd. You're in campus, what kids? <laughs> oh, no, in, in campus level. <laughs> uh -huh. By the in campus level, like if a, uh, let's say a lady is having money and you, I'm also having money, maybe th the parents is providing, my parents also providing for me. He's providing the money which is just enough for me for mm -hmm. a whole semester. Mm -hmm. And she's also getting money which is enough for her for the whole semester. Right. Yes. Now, it is the where the problem comes is that I, b I spend my money with her. The, but the money she's being given. I don't know where they, <laughs> they took it to. <laughs> <laughs> because so, uh -huh. all the time, maybe, for, for example, as sometimes we do it in a Club 36, there back to Nairobi University. And uh, every evening you find a lady, hi, where are you? Can you go for supper? And uh, that moment she tells you go to for supper, what you think of the budget of two people? Right. You go provide for yourself and for her. But she also has she had money. You don't know what the money will be spent to. So you're you're wondering why she can't pay for her meal, for instance, if she says let's go out. But you're also thinking ahead, because you talked about kids. So you're thinking about someone who has a vision as well. <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, there are very few women like uh, Michelle Obama who saw Barack, who was an intern at the law firm that she was at, and decided uh, there's actually more to him than just maybe the car that had a hole <laughs> in the floor of the car. Um, are women willing to look past some of those things nowadays, and I ask you that, or they want to see a fully made man at this stage? You know, when a lady engages in a relationship, they are definitely looking forward to their future because you cannot say the future is now. The future is sometime after, after today. And so when I see there is potential in you, I'll also start putting statistics about whether I'm going to have a future with you or I'm not going to have a future with you. So it actually st we actually set the pace on the very first time we meet. So that I know, what type, am I going to suffer in this relationship later in the future? Am I going to suffer in this marriage? Or I'm not going to suffer in this marriage? If I guess that I'm going to suffer in this marriage, there is no way I'll continue staying in that relationship. I'll actually walk away. But if I know there is a potentiality in the near future, I'll have some good life. I'll actually maintain. But then there is only one advice for the men. Just work hard and make yourself financially stable. And, and what about the women? <laughs> what about the women? What? Okay, what women? Because, you know, the thing is, the reality is, the guy is struggling, he's approaching you, you're struggling just as much as he is, right? Exactly. So why can't that same pressure be put on these young ladies to get a job as well, take care of themselves and not look for someone out there? Exactly. Yeah. We ladies, I'm talking as one. So I also have to work hard because there is no way, I'm, I'm sure if that man is financially stable, but then I'm like very dependent and he's seeing like there is nothing I can bring 
back home they'll actually leave me and go for somebody else so i'll have to work my ass off such that i get something also bring something to the table but then bringing something to the table doesn't mean i'll also chip in because What? My money is my money. Your money is our money. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear from the gentleman behind there. He's kind of shaking your head the whole time oh she's speaking. What do you make of that? I think our women, they're just like in a bargaining mood. They want, to, they want you to think that they are providing, while in real case they are doing nothing. And that's what this, our lady is also telling us here. You know, we are living in a competitive society. These days you see each family, they want to move in in a posh estate. So if your woman is using her money ma for makeup to go for some dinner, and you want to save and buy a car, live in a posh estate, you won't manage. So men should stop this mindset of, they, they are trying to, th for, to, for the people to think that they are comfortable. Like, because it's a patriarchal society, they want the neighbors to see that I'm providing, I'm mm -hmm. a man. They think that if a woman provides, if a woman pays rent, then the man is lesser. And that's the, that's the mindset which our, our men should stop. They should just tell their women, let's save together, let's invest together, and at least we will go somewhere, instead of cheating that they are comfortable, while in real case, they are suffering. That's why you see that, this, uh, you see that most of our men are suffering in silence, and you see a man is going, sometimes they commit suicide, And if you look even at the, if you take a young man for a good date, the two dates is almost enough for a house rent. So it's not possible to <laughs> just be like that. <laughs> Clearly, this life is not sustainable, it's Mariga. Not. You know, and um, as, as we, we wrap up, I want to kind of get your final comments. But mm -hmm. there's a guy watching and he's saying, okay, I hear all of that. Yeah. Yes, I'm broke, but I still want to date. How do you advise me? What do I do? One, let me just go back to something else just yeah. for a brief second. There's an art investigative article done about um, two months back about uh, youth in Madari, specifically around dating and the pressures that they were facing. Mm -hmm. These young men are going to the extent of theft, mm. actual crime for dating. Wow. There was a full-on article covering Madari in the area around it, and it's an actual problem because these kids, and these kids aren't 20, these kids are 16, My 15, goodness. 14, robbing people on the street to be able to buy uh, the girls that they want mm -hmm. good things and to take them out on dates. So this problem goes, it's nothing, it, it's a problem that adults face, but it's even it goes back even further to how you bring up your children yeah. True. and conversations about money, because I feel that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Because you're a young man right now, you're dating. I disagree, beautiful lady over here. <laughs> you deserve to date in campus, right? Love is, love is not <laughs> a haven that is supposed to happen at some point afterwards. And your relationships may or may not lead anywhere. It doesn't matter. Enjoy it while it is right now. What I tell the young man is be honest with the person that you're dating. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure he will face. He, he will not only face pressure from the woman he's dating, but from her friends which becomes an even funnier thing because the statements <laughs> made about you even worse. And sometimes your own friends who are men. Because I was telling people, a lot of the patriarchy that we men uphold hurts us in the same way. We just don't look at it that way. So we want to be providers because you know, the provision has power and power is prestige. But the same tag and the same situation that we use also hurts us. A lot of patriarchy hurts people in phases and right. particularly hurts poorer men more than richer men right and so the poor men who also in some senses still want to stick being a provider and having dominion over the women still suffer from some of these same situations so i want to tell him is that be honest be honest about where you are it will be very very hard especially in a situation like that where you're still uh, under a lot of pressure right. and want to impress be honest about where you are stick to your guns and If you find that you're incompatible with some of these people, no matter how much you like them, just go on to the next mm -hmm. person. You'll always find someone who is as understanding and wants the same things that you want. Go to that. Respect people's references. Don't go for things that once you're told, and I realize it's a big problem with men, once you're told no, or I only want a certain kind of lifestyle, and you still keep on pushing, you're going to get yourself hurt. Mm -hmm. And next to the ladies is to question a lot of these things, to question their own biases to question the situation when you think that this man should always provide and you shouldn't. Because it's, you, one of the, my basic principles for relationships is be fair and be kind mm -hmm. to each other. 
are you kind to this man if you're seeing that he's struggling and you're not doing anything about it? Are you kind in the fact that he's spending all of this and you get to keep your own money? Is this something you'd want done to yourself? If it isn't, just don't do it. Challenge the norms that you've grown up with. Right. And Anita, how do you kind of strike the balance to where the women may feel, okay, great, yeah, I can pick up the bill, but how do I not cross into the territory of being taken advantage of? So you don't get into the other <sighs> extreme. That's a whole new thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different thing. Uh, we have a crop of men, uh, sorry to say so, uh, but they actually take advantage a lot. Because you see when a woman loves, she loves. She, she might not even notice she's spending most of the times. And you see, that's a problem. Like he said, he wants someone to provide. He wants a woman who can also provide. But to what extent? Because you'll find a man who realizes, oh, maybe he lost his job and then he's going to slack at home mm -hmm. uh, for a week mm -hmm. or two, a month or two. Then he's going to realize, oh, the bills are sorted. Oh, the kids are in school, so why do I really need this job? The other day, someone wrote on Twitter, he's... Um, you mean they're behaving like sometimes some of these women do? Is okay. That the <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to share. Share, share, share. The roles are reversed. What? <laughs> it's not a bad thing that not every woman... Is in our generation, sure. women don't want to stay at home. So you see, there's a guy who wrote, he's a house husband. It took me a whole day to analyze that situation. I kept going back to the tweet. And I asked, I, I didn't want to ask him because I didn't want to sound rude. So I asked him, what is a house? What is that? Right. I was like, no, me, I stay at home, take care of the kids. And I swear to God, I actually called my dad because I, I could not understand how this works. And we've been raised very differently. And I don't want, to be honest, personally, this is my own personal feelings. I don't want a man to foot all my bills. I don't want him to. Mm -hmm. But I want a man to provide. Because at the end of the day, as a woman, let's be honest, if I provide, if I start giving you everything, then I'm going to start feeling like I am the man in the relationship. And that's a thin line. That's a very thin line between respect and losing respect for each other. Because one day I'll be doing everything for you. Then one day I'll ask myself, why am I actually doing everything for this man? I mean, what are you bringing on the table? And there's, quite a, uh, sad to say, media women have this problem. You have, you're too busy, you'll never notice someone is using you. Hey, babe, can you do this for me? I'm a busy woman, independent woman, you're too busy. You never notice someone is using you until one day you take stock, you're like... Why am I always giving? And, and it's a thin line. So women, yes, be independent. I, I, was, I was actually sad when she said she wants a man to provide everything. You see, the, the women we're having behind us, you know, because you should not use a man as a bank. Um, a man is not a job, let me say that. A man is not a job. A man is just a companion, a provider. You're literally a helper. And what does a helper do? You boost him when he can't. You know, if you give a man 100% of everything, then in our generation, in our society, where we are so empowered even more than these men, it would be wrong to leave everything to the man. And I say that because most women don't listen. When you give your man money, it's not so that you can pull him down or break his ego. A man is his ego and, and pride, as you said. So if you give a man money, it's not that... Do you know why men give back money to their wives after mepatiwa? Because ataki kuambiwa. I don't want you to ever pull it in an argument like, you didn't return my 10K. Oh, Lord, I'll give it back with interest. You see, but women, we have, we have a smart mouth sometimes, you know. Yeah. So if you're helping a man, help him as your man. And women mark this, your man, not someone's man or some, uh -uh. once he's your man, he's yours. Don't be helping, don't be Red Cross out here. Once he's your man, you can help him. It's okay. And be a woman who's independent. There's nothing as beautiful as paying your own bills as a woman. Yeah. It feels nice, you know. One of at the end of the day, and ask yourself, what if you don't have a man? You have to ask yourself as a woman every day, what if there's no man? Mm. What if the men decided when you ask me, well, strike, they went on strike for how a whole How would you week. survive? How would you survive if there's no man? You have to ask yourself that. So our young ladies need to understand. But, but then I agreed with the statement, a broke guy deserves a chance. Yeah. But not a broke guy who's doing nothing. It's a broke guy who's trying to do something with himself. Kunaole ako broke na mkanga naenda base. That's, that's not someone you're giving a chance. It's a broke guy who's doing something and trying. He deserves the same chance with a person with money. The same, right. same exact chance. We have to bring it to a close. Thank you so much to my mini audience, to my panelists as well. Uh, very interesting views coming out of this discussion. <laughs> I guess you have to be the judge. Uh, but uh, what I really liked is what you said, Mariga. Full disclosure at the beginning <laughs> and letting someone know where you lie in terms of uh, your financial circumstances. Thank you so much for watching keep the conversation going on social media hashtag citizen weekend have a lovely night and let's do this again next week <laughs>